With St. Patrick's Day on the 17th of March, I thought this month would be a great opportunity to review some Irish whiskies. So today, I'm going to be trying Limavati Single Barrel Irish Whiskey. There's a, there's a dog on the bottle, buddy. Did you see there's a dog on the bottle? Did you care about... Hey guys, I'm Nate Martin, the Whiskey Scribe. I'm a whiskey enthusiast and I love all things whiskey, but taste is subjective and there's a lot of different whiskies out there and a lot of ways to enjoy them. So whether you're a connoisseur or you just want to explore more whiskey, let's do it together. If you'd like to see more from me, please consider subscribing. I put up new videos every week. You can also follow me over on Instagram. One of the things I love about whiskey, other than drinking it, is the stories that some distilleries have. And Limavati is not short of any of these stories. So the name Limavati actually comes from the Irish Gaelic term that I am not going to pronounce correctly. Lim an madid. Lim an... Lim an madid. I probably said that wrong. What it means is leap of the dog. And it refers back to an old story of the town where an Irish wolfhound leapt over the river road to warn the clan of an impending attack. Hence, the leaping dog on the logo. So the leaping dog represents bravery and goodwill. So they very much celebrate that relationship people have with their dogs. If you look at their social media, you'll see there's a lot of photos of people enjoying whiskey and sitting around with their dogs. I'm not sure if I fit that profile. So the distiller for Limavati is Daryl McNally. He's an Irish master distiller and a bit of an Irish whiskey le legacy. His family were actually the ones who started the Limavati distillery back in 1750. And it operated successfully for a number of years before having to close down in 1915, basically as the effects of World War I started to ramp up. So coming from a whiskey family, Daryl really wanted to be able to get back into the whiskey industry and start up the Limavati distillery again. So he started from the, the, literally the distillery floor. He was sweeping distillery floors and worked his way up through all the roles until he finally got to being a distiller and eventually being classed as a master distil distiller, a master distiller. I don't know why that word's hard to say. So he's worked at distilleries like Bushmills and Belfast and Dublin before finally being able to put all that experience into reviving the Limavati label. And that's where we are now. On to the Limavati whiskey. Now, when we talk about this whiskey, it is spelt with an E because it's Irish. Now, I have done another video on the difference between whiskey and whiskey, so I won't go into that too much now. What I will go into is that Irish whiskey is often made with a combination of malted barley and unmalted barley or single grain. And I actually only found out the reason for this just the other day. So there's a YouTube channel called The Grail where Rachel and Jen review whiskies. They're very knowledgeable about whiskey. I always learn something new and there's some really entertaining banter between them as they go through it. What they were saying was when the English started to impose taxation on malt, the way the Irish whiskey industry got around this was they started to reduce or remove the amount of malted barley that they used in their whiskey. And so that's why Irish whiskey is often very grain based or made with a combination of malted and unmalted barley. And that is also the reason why Irish whiskey is often a slightly lighter taste compared to Scottish whiskey and perhaps have some more of those biscuity notes that come from the single grains. So Limavati, however, is not grain based. It's a single malt whiskey that's triple distilled in copper pot stills in small batches. Now that spirit is then aged in ex-bourbon casks and then finished in Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. Where they get a little bit different, however, though, is in this bottling stage. Most distilleries will tend to vat a couple of hundred barrels in together and then bottle all of those so that you've got a few thousand bottles of whiskey that all taste the same. Every bottle of Limavati whiskey comes from a single barrel. They don't vat them first. They will just bottle the 846 bottles they can get out of one barrel of whiskey. And that's what goes into the bottle and it even numbers it. So this is barrel number 39. Bottle number 530 of 846. So this is really, really great for the, for the actual whiskey drinker, the customers, you and I, because it's normally only independent bottlers that will release an edition that's just one single cask. Whereas with Limavati, you're getting to taste that every single time you get a bottle. Now, I love that. That's so unique. It's a great way to enjoy whiskey and it's getting results for them. They've already won a number of awards in different spirit festivals. But now let's finally try this whiskey. So looking at it first off, there's a real yellow sort of golden color to it. Don't know if you can see that. The legs are kind of slow moving. 
I definitely get some really nice malty sort of sweetness on the nose to begin with. And as you smell a bit further, you can um, you can start to pick up those um, those sherry notes where it's that sweet grape infused with the wood. It's very aromatic. It's got a really nice nose. So the sherry notes do carry across on the palate, but they're not quite as intense as I thought they would be. Like sometimes with a sherry based whiskey, it's very, it's very thick and creamy. Whereas this is still kind of, it's kind of light in the mouth. <laughs> you made me laugh and then it went down the back of my throat. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so it's not quite as um, creamy or thick honey sort of sweetness that you sometimes get from sherry-based whiskies or sherry-aged whiskies, I should say. But that sweetness is there. Okay, so I, I sometimes see the tasting notes before I do these and I try to avoid saying things that the distillery has put out there because you just don't want to be copying that. But the tasting notes on the website do say toasted vanilla and that is the best description for what's in the background there. This, there's this earthy sort of it, it really is toasted vanilla. It's that, um, it's that, surprisingly, it's the wood and the vanilla notes that have come through from the bourbon cask, I think, that haven't been completely overshadowed by, by the sherry cask. And given the way they deliver this whiskey, it'd be really interesting then to get another bottle and see if more of the sherry has come through and less of the bourbon. I do like that. And the finish is, um, those sweet flavors sort of slowly dissipate and you get this little bit of warmth on your chest. It's a really enjoyable whiskey. It's funny, knowing that it's a single malt and not a grain-based whiskey, it does taste a little bit Irish, and I think it's that triple distillation that's made it a little bit lighter. So traditionally, Irish whiskey is triple distilled. You hear that old adage, to be sure, to be sure, to be sure. I believe that comes from Irish triple distilled, but most uh, Irish whiskey distilleries will triple distill their whiskey. They triple distilled, yeah. Triple distilled, triple distilled, tri dip, dip, dip. But that doesn't mean that Scottish whiskies don't triple distill. A lot of distilleries that do. Orkintoshin, for one, has three massive stills in their distillery and all their spirit goes through all three. I'm gonna put that down, let it get some air and see if that changes at all. But I just also just wanna talk about the, um, the bottle because the distillery is trying to do a combination of doing both old and new. So they're doing things a little bit differently in that they're releasing the, uh, the actual single barrels, but they're still keeping to some traditions. So the bottle is actually based off of an original bottle from the 1750s that was dug up in a field next to Daryl's house. So they found this old whiskey bottle that was from the original distillery and they've tried to make sure that the new bottle matches some of those aspects from the original. So there's deliberately some little imperfections in the glass. You can see some little air bubbles in the glass throughout. You've got this bobble sort of thing at the top here, which is a little bit of an older style for, for glass blowing. And it also has the relief, the little icon of the, the leaping dog on the, bar, on the bottle itself. And then they're trying to also remind everyone that Limavati was a distillery that was started in 1750. So they've got Limavati and 1750 on the barrel, on the bottle as well. But let's try the whiskey again and we'll see if it's changed at all after resting a little. There's some slightly fresher notes coming through now, like that malty sort of flavor and, and smell before. It's kind of opened up. It's, it's leaning more towards cut grass now. And the sweetness has sort of become a little bit thicker. It's almost like, it's almost like toffee now. So it's, it's interesting that that's still able to change in the glass. I like that. It's sometimes lighter whiskeys don't change too much, but that's great. I really like that. So I probably should have mentioned earlier, this whiskey does uh, get bottled at 46%. Um, Not that it would matter for you because you can't tell yeah. anyway. If the last video taught me anything, it's that I cannot read ABV and I think that 60% is 48 or something like, yeah. Don't take my word for, for ABV. I can't taste the difference. Mm -hmm. So this whiskey is really enjoyable, neat, but it doesn't have an age statement and it's an affordable whiskey. It's sort of, it retails in Australia around about $100 a bottle. So you can enjoy it neat or you can enjoy it on the rocks or you can put it into a cocktail. It's, it's versatile, it can work for anything. And Limavati very much encourages that. There's, if you go to their website, they've actually got cocktail recipes on there for cocktails that they found work rather well with this whiskey. I suppose now that I think about it, those cocktails would probably taste a teeny bit different each time, depending on which barrel the whiskey came from. So the fact that these are individual barrel releases means that one of the things that you could probably actually do with this whiskey that you wouldn't normally get a chance is to get a couple of different barrel editions of the same whiskey and then actually get to try and taste them all in a single lineup 
and try and pick the differences between them all. Normally, the only way that you would get a chance to do that normally is to actually go to the distillery and crack a couple of the barrels. And so for that reason, it's really only whiskey blenders and distillers who get to actually take four whiskey barrels that have the same spirit in them and taste how that barrel has affected the flavor. You have an opportunity to do that with Limavati. Like, you never get a chance to do that. That's really, really unique. So no matter how you enjoy it, it is a really nice drop. And if you're looking for an Irish whiskey for March 17 for St. Patrick's Day, I do recommend grabbing a bottle of Limavati. Or any time. Doesn't have to be St. Patrick's Day. You can enjoy Irish whiskey whenever you want. So that's the first Irish whiskey, but I will be doing more Irish whiskeys throughout March, so keep an eye out. I want to know what Irish whiskey you really enjoy, so please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. But for now, enjoy what's in your glass and slange. Limavati, single malt, single, single barrel Irish whiskey. It's single barrel Irish whiskey, mate. Oh. You said light in the mouth and I couldn't. But what I will go into is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, does it look like I've been crying? No. Cool. On the inside, maybe. <laughs> That's where I always cry. 